Hey guys, so probably a nightmare of a situation for any Magic player, and I wouldn't wish this upon anyone, but it is something to be very careful about. Your Magic cards are extremely valuable. The days have long, I mean, basically the advice that people are still giving is not good advice. That, oh, somebody may have stole your backpack and thrown out the Magic cards. Most people know magic cards are valuable now, and uh, I would even suggest that in terms of how valuable they are, they're, they're incredibly liquid, right? But uh, there is a very few people at the magic convention that you're staying at. So of all the people flying around and they're staying at a convention center, you can be sure that the people who would break into your car at the convention center definitely know what magic is, right? So I would say that uh, it is likely there are people who are professional thieves targeting Magic players. And this has continued on since Star City Games in Richmond. I used to go to law school in William and Mary, and I had a good friend, and we used to go. And you would hear horror stories about dudes following you to the bathroom. And after they follow you to the bathroom, they're going to punch you in the face, and they're going to steal your stuff. Because that's how it works. That's what they do. That's what they like doing. Now, in terms of putting your backpack with, I think, eight or nine EDH decks, it's a lot to lose. That is a lot to lose. We're not talking about a small amount to lose. And let's take a look at what I probably, if I had to guess, maybe 10,000, 20, the Mox Pearl. Oh, so he has eight decks and then some signed cards. So this is a pretty big event. And imagine how quickly this event can be ruined by just having a, a douchebag steal from you. But here's what I need to say. Uh, and and, and I, I don't want it um, to sound harsh. I don't want it to sound mean. Uh, I, I just want you guys... Um, I just want you guys to know... That in terms of what um, I, I believe, you should not carry, you should not carry all your decks, all your valuable duels, your moxes, if you don't intend to trade them. Uh, I think a lot of Magic players try to flex their collection, and I'll be honest, it's nothing worth flexing. I mean, the whales, like myself, have their collections in bank vaults. And I, I see my collection maybe once every 90 days to make sure it's still there. But other than that, uh, I you know, I used to go more often because I had more reason to go to the bank. But nowadays, everything is so digital. Even the bit, my whole business is uh, marketing anyway, so it's very, very digital. Um, when we talk about the people stealing it's a tale as old as time it happens every convention it happens every time anyone leaves a backpack even you know mark rober in california he has these experiments where the backpack has a tracker and a cell phone you can see that the majority of these people who steal are not good people they don't give a shit and in some states like seattle and california it doesn't seem like they all get arrested that much so if you have a, a pin or something on your backpack identifying there could be magic cards in it, I, I would just take it off, man. I would probably do not something non-discreet or put it in your trunk because you're less likely. They're, they're, they're going to target they're going to target cars where they can see that there's an item in the car. Uh, to target a trunk, as Mark Rober would say, it, it's just not possible, right? If you're putting your luggage in the trunk, much harder for them to target you. Uh, because they would have to do an additional step, and they're trying to get out as quickly as possible. The other thing that I want to just mention, um, and hark back on, there are a lot of players who bring their like entire collection to like F and M, and 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 you're like, okay, so th let me tra see your trade by, and then like ninety percent of the stuff like they bring or isn't even for trade. I don't see the point of that. You know, I, I really don't see the point of bringing so many decks with you and i mean just enjoy you know i have a massive collection i have one edh stack and i'm not good at brea right 
and if I want to change that EDA stack, then I take my Briar deck apart. The the cards that are the same, they're already in sleeve, so that saves me a little bit of time. And then I switch to another deck. These people with eight different decks, I don't know how they, I mean, I have 400 dual hands, and I don't have eight different decks. You know, like, because the pieces that you would need, like the cradles, like, it would just be kind of weird. I think uh, with today's economy, today's uh, price of magic cards, people um, basically got to, um, they got to try to save money. They got to try to do the best job they can to make sure and minimize theft because this is obviously a bad thing. Yeah, uh, since the beginning of time, since the beginning, magic was magic. I remember it even as a little kid, people would steal it. I can tell you a story. Back in my day, Morphling and Squee, Goblin Naboo were the two really hot cards. My friend had a binder and he had like a bunch of cards. I, I just remember Squee and Morphling and somebody at the Wizard of Coast stole his binder. This was in Westchester or no, Exton, Pennsylvania in the Exton Mall. We had a Wizard of Coast near J.C. Penny, and he was there and a grown adult. So we were in middle school, maybe seventh grade. Uh, I was hanging out with my other friends, and he stole his uh, binder out of his backpack. And back then, there wasn't that many cameras. Like It's not like today. I don't even remember. if there, Maybe they had like one camera at the registry. So it was a clean getaway. So even back then, grown adults were stealing. And we kind of knew which adult it was because he was like a really shady dude. Uh, now, again, the evidence is gone because he, he went to his car and the next week we saw him, he obviously was smart enough to not bring the same binder. But I've seen very despicable acts in Magic the Gathering and I don't expect it to ever stop. That's because that's my view of it. I know a lot of you are like happy-go-lucky. You want to see the milk, what, the glass of milk half full. I'm a lawyer. We're trained to look and nitpick and get to like, you know, every little wrong thing that can happen. And I can tell you this, man, um, this is a bad feeling. I've had some cards. I've had a uh, $500 back when I was a kid. I had a $500 collection stone for me. Again, playing at this event, there are people who attend this event. Let, let me, let me put it this way. You are a professional criminal. You can't even find a job at Taco Bell. You know that there's a convention or you know there's a gathering of players and you can ingratiate yourself with them and you can just steal from them. In fact, I went to a game store in Houston and the way that they tried to steal from me at the time before I was a big bad lion was they would actually have a friend. You, they would always try to trade with you when you're playing, right? Right. So you're, you're, you're playing one of their friends. Now they have a group of friends and they want to trade with you. They all want to trade with you. Uh, and that's why I used to put multiple cards in the same pocket. Uh, I no longer do that. I actually put, I actually fill out my whole binder with like shit. Like I just have like a 2000 count of just like random bulk lands and stuff. And that's why I can know what I traded, what I didn't trade. And now I simply don't even trade. And I definitely don't bring, you know, more than, more than one deck. I bring what I need. I bring maybe just a basic land, maybe probably less than $200 of just tr really tradable liquid assets in case I see something I like in EDH. But also, you could just buy online nowadays. It's a lot easier to do that. Anyway, bye guys.